Welcome and we have arrived on the fourth episode of our first segment of this fourth season on The Just Man. And of course, we shall listen now to that title, Just Man or Righteous Person, in the Gospel of Matthew regarding Joseph of Nazareth. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. The Gospel of Matthew talks precisely of this just man, a righteous man. And it was put to the test from the narration that we had regarding the circumstances of the birth of Jesus. The understanding of Joseph of the precepts of the law was no doubt by the book. To observe the law of Moses in order to have a fruitful, prosperous life with a clear, clean conscience before the Maker. But the facts were obvious. Mary disappears for three months. And when she reappears, her tummy was bulging with the weight of pregnancy. And very probably, this woman was mum, silent about the circumstances for which she quote-unquote broke the rules of betrothal. And of course, Joseph eyes with great surprise had a surefire certainty that the baby in his betrothed wife's womb was not his. So he was decided, decided to divorce Mary according to the law. This is in observance of the law for which he is known to be a righteous person in his environment. But it's interesting. He would not want to publicly expose Mary to shame. So, while he knew the legalities of the betrothal period of no contact and Mary with a child in her womb would have not complied according to those laws, but she loved Mary and was decided not to expose her publicly, but he would go away quietly. And then an angel, an angel came in a dream as he was deeply convinced that he was in the right, the devil told him, the, the angel, sorry, told him that no, God wanted him to forsake his plans and offer his good name for the sake of saving the blessed mother and the baby in her womb. Could God be skirting his own laws in this sense? Should Joseph believe what seems to be quite unreasonable 
and absurd. But uh, deep faith and above all, great trust in the divine dispositions won the day in his heart. Rather than proceeding with the dictates of the law and going to it by the book, he looks into the mysterious circumstances and he said, this requires mysterious responses. And so as the angel told Joseph, he decided to take Mary, his wife, to his home. And yes, he will name the child Yeshua, doing everything as per the word of God through that angel and in a dream. You know, we are allowed to raise questions about the ways of the Almighty. Yet, as found in the book of Job, we are not in any position to question God in His ways. There's a difference between questioning the ways of the Almighty and questioning God Himself. The incarnation of His only begotten Son continues to remain a mystery to this very day. A mystery so deep that we cannot plumb to its real intent of God the Father in terms of salvation. But we live by this Catholic faith and we appreciate how God rules us in the way later Job would decide, no longer to ask questions, but to allow God to be God. When we really accept the mystery of that incarnation of the Divine Son, we would recognize the human world and the material world as suffused with the presence of God as did Francis of Assisi. There is no one and no thing that is not within the divine reach to bring about salvation for all. Look at what this slide says. Francesco di Assisi would say, I've been all things unholy. If God can work through me, he could he can work through anyone the new heavens and the new earth actually began with the coming down of the almighty and making that home of us and so francesco de assisi sings this beautiful hymn of Brother Sun, Sister Moon, and Mother Earth. Praise be you, my Lord, through our sister, Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us. But it's not only him in terms of Catholic spirituality. There is Inigo de Loyola of Spain. If Francesco de Assisi is from Italy. Inigo is from Spain. And he too says, we need to find God in all things and all things in God. This is similar to someone who belongs to the culture of the French, Francois de Sales. All of us can attain to Christian virtue and holiness no matter what condition of life we live, no matter what our life work may be. For this reason, we, Francois de Sales advocates holiness in the 
ordinary Christian home. Now, to this day, the international model of holiness is found now in the modern times in the person of Jose Maria Escriva Balaguer. He engaged himself with young men and invoked to them the great possibility that holiness is found in their daily lives, in the ordinariness of life. And so he would accompany businessmen and uh, encourage them to live the Christian virtues in the very marketplace they are involved. So I thought it would be good to find one of the adherents of Saint Jose Maria Escriva to give us a precious testimony of this wondrous way of the divine in his own life. Let's hear him out. Greetings. I am Jose Cison Sandejas Jr. Nicknamed Lito for Jose Lito. As many small boys get nicknames which stay for their life, like in mine, following Spanish practices. A first notable sign of the mercy and God's love for me through Saint Joseph is to have given me a father like mine, Jose P. Sandejas. A very kind, gentle, and pious man who unfortunately died at the age of 51 in a car accident, going home to Los Baños together with my mother and others having purchased from Divisoria and other Manila sources of chicken feed ingredients for our poultry farm. My father, together with my five sisters, is out on a Sunday morning paseo in Rojas Boulevard, which unfortunately I could not join due to smallpox and which confined me and my mother to our home. The second photo is of young Jesus on a cross, which was in my father's bedroom altar where he would pray the evening rosary with whoever of, of us could join. He never forced us to join him. A next notable indication of God's mercy and love for me, also through Saint Joseph, is through my mother, and to have seen the way how she then, at the young age of 43, and quite attractive, but she never remarried in spite of having many admirers. She buckled down to taking care of her six children, ages 15 down to six. I was 13, a second child, an only boy. My mother did it all through hard work on the poultry farm which she had just started to supplant the importations from the U.S. three years after liberation of our imports of from the U.S. of eggs and chicken meat. She also transferred us to schools with lesser cost. In my case, being a boy whom she always felt needed a network of classmates in order to be doing business with them later, she wanted me to return to the Ateneo where I had finished grade school and was, and, uh, but the admin, Ateneo administration would only accept me back into first year high school because I had not had Latin in my first year in the UP rural high school. Therefore, my mother decided that I should not waste one year 
and just finish my whole high school in UP Rural High and just go back to Manila for college. However, near to high school graduation, I expressed to my mother my preference to study in Los Baños where I had developed my childhood friendships, but my mother felt that my Los Baños friends would not be able to help me in business later. She had high hopes for her only son. Instinctively for her, I guess, she kept me busy in the farm with many chores while in school and in on summer vacation, vacation. And she even did this even when I was already in college in La Salle. So she really made it a point to develop my habits of doing hard work. In the picture shown where my mother is shown with me uh, about to graduate from high school is a poem that she uh, dedicated to me and framed which is very inspiring, which I can read very briefly to my son. Do you know that your soul is of my soul such part that you seem to be fiber and soul of my heart? None other can please me or pain me as you, etc. This poem was very touching and inspiring to me. In my next indication of God's mercy to get closer to St. Joseph's fidelity and humility, early on <clears throat> I had difficulties in adjusting to De La Salle, being the Provinciano that I was. Also, on my first day in math class in La Salle, I had been put in the second best section because the best section was where the high school graduates from La Salle, San Beda, and International School had been placed on account of having had advanced subjects in math and science in high school, which I had not received in UP Rural High School. Somehow I asked the math professor a question which I cannot recall whether it was a foolish question or a good question. However, he looked at me incredulously and asked what my name was. Upon learning that I am surnamed Sandejas, he looked at me quizzically and asked me further what I was doing in the second best section. And I could only say that I was placed there. He got out of the room went to the dean's office, and when he came back, he brought me to the best section where the topics being discussed were already more advanced and which I could hardly understand. But this professor, Christy Hernandez, called me aside to say I should not worry because he would give me extra tutorial lessons so I could catch up with the rest. He gave me the opportunity to work very hard to catch up, which fortunately I managed to do before the end of the first year, and I am forever grateful for his kindness and remained close to him until he passed on. The net result of this development was that all, I got all the more used to working very hard during my college days which lay the continuing habits that my mother had started from her work struggles after my father's death and the hard work she needed to do to survive financially. A next all-important event, as I began to keep pace with my more urbane classmates, was I became more confident about socializing in Manila. Some enchanted evening as the saying goes, there was a class party at St. Scholastical's year level of ours, third year in La Salle Engineering. And as the song goes, I saw a stranger 
across a crowded room. And somehow I knew, I knew even then, that somewhere I would see her again and again. Who can explain it? She is now my wife of 59 years, Elenita San Agustin. Asking around, I learned we were neighbors and that she was a daily mass goer. And so, what is a suitor like me to do? Naturally, go to mass daily also to gain poggy points, right? Needless to say, daily mass brings about many spiritual graces, even if the initial motivation was temporal. Another sign of God's love and mercy for us, working through the docility and industry of St. Joseph. Elenita and I were both affable students with God good academic records shown in the pictures herein. And we eventually started talking of marriage, except that my mother insisted that a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering is not enough. And she felt that I needed at least a master's degree, especially since my father was not around to endorse me to his business friends. After graduation, therefore, off to the U.S. I went in a rush because a master's degree in management engineering had not been in my plans. I was accustomed already to working very hard and so in the next nine months to obtain my master's degree were a further full concentration on studying, especially since the realizing that the full cost for my master's degree was quite expensive since I could not get a scholarship on account of the rush that I went through to get on with my degree. I finished on schedule. Elenita arrives in New York where my graduate school was located and we got married on the day after my last final exam and fortunately also on my 22nd birthday. Then onwards to work at IBM, during which work time I could see I knew so little compared to my U.S. educated office mates. So two years later, I decided to go onwards to further studies this time to get a PhD in materials engineering with full intentions to come back to the Philippines right after finishing the PhD. For both the master's degree and the PhD, however, I had to study especially hard because each degree I was taking was not related to the earlier degree I had finished, from chemical engineering to management engineering to materials engineering. Again, St. Joseph's inspiration of hard work was constantly at work in me and somehow the relative difficulty of reaching churches and schedules for masses in the U.S. resulted in Elenitas and my daily mass going taking a back seat. Next phase of my uh, journey is career and tragedies. Coming back to Manila and joining the rat race of career and bringing up our children, shown in the next picture, our daily mass going did not resume until our merciful Father sent us reminders that He is in control. Two of our children passed away 10 years apart. Pepe, at 12 years old of leukemia, shown in this picture, and 10 years later, our, our eldest, Thomas, also in this another picture, then 29 years old, with a wife and two-year-old, has a car, a fatal car accident. Meanwhile, Elenita and I, during Pepe's illness, 
resume daily mass going to petition for a miracle and in the process both of us become more spiritual again. Later on we become members of the Opus Dei in thankfulness for God's love and mercy through showing us St. Joseph's docility and humility. Here we are at 80 years of age and 59 years of marriage, still working hard, but no longer for material compensation of treasures here on earth, but for treasures in heaven. Pictures of us and the whole extended family with 13 grandchildren. Thanks be to God. <laughs>